All right, in this lecture, we're going to take a look at a very fundamental concept in Kotlin and pretty much any programming language, which are functions. And we're going to look at functions in much more detail in the next section, where we're going to also look at functional programming concepts and how to use them in Kotlin. But in this lecture, we're only going to look at how to actually create a function at the syntax and how to use it. Now, the syntax is very different from Java, so it might take a bit getting used to, but let's just go ahead and see what it actually looks like. So let's go ahead and use the fun keyword to create a function. So kind of similar to Python where you have the dev keyword to create a function. And in this case, it's just called fun. And then I'm gonna call the function permit entrance. And that's just gonna take in as a parameter an age, which is of type int. So again, just like when declaring variables, the type always comes after the identifier. And that also goes for function arguments and also for the function itself. So the return value of the function is defined after its identifier or its name, permit entrance. So I'm gonna say colon and the return type of the function is a Boolean. And then in curly braces, we can define the function body. Whereas this at the top here, as you might know, is just referred to as the function signature, which must uniquely identify the function. So inside the function body here, we can now define the logic of the function, which in this case should just be that the entrance is permitted to anyone whose age is at least 18. So let's return age greater or equal to 18, and then entrance is permitted. So we're gonna return true. And in other cases, we're gonna return false. So let's go ahead and run this to create this function. So now, we have this function defined called permit entrance. So we can now also use it or call it pass in an argument. So in this case, let's try with h7, hit control enter to run the function and it's gonna come back with false. If on the other hand, we call it with h18 or something larger than that, then it's gonna come back with true. And of course you can only pass in integers because you defined the argument to be of type int and the return value is always gonna be a boolean. Now let's go ahead and look at a shorthand syntax in Colin, which is used very frequently in idiomatic Colin code, which is used to create functions like this in a more concise way. More specifically, what I mean by functions like this are functions that only contain basically one expression in the function body. And what we can do here is we can actually get rid of the curly braces and just say the function is equal to, and then use the expression here to define the function, get rid of all curly braces. So this means now that the value of the function is always gonna be the right hand side here of the equal sign. And we can also define it like this, and it's still gonna work the exact same way. Also notice that of course, Colin again, or the Colin compiler, can again infer the type here if we say, or we save this to a variable. So granted is permit entrance of 11. Then it can also infer the type granted very easily, of course, from the return type of the function. So that's no problem at all. We can still make use of Colin's type inference. This is basically the exact same thing that was also working when we said list is list of something. Then of course, Colin is able to infer the type. All right, now starting again here from the top in the REPL, next thing you can do is you can use var arg arguments just like in Java. So let's say we want to actually be able to pass in as many ages as we want, for example, for a group of people, and we want to permit entrance if any one of them has at least age 18. So what we can do is we can use the var arg keyword, then say ages of type int, which means that each of the arguments must be of type int, and the return value is still gonna be a boolean. And we can just return here ages.any, and then we can go through each of the ages. So let's say age goes to age greater or equal or 18. So the any function here is just gonna return true if any of the ages in this variable here is greater or equal to 18, because that's what we defined in this lambda here but we're gonna take a much closer look at this later on. For now, it's just important to know we can use the var arg keyword to define var arg arguments in Kotlin. 
and that will allow us to then call this function and pass in as many arguments as we like. So let's say 11, 20 and 7. And then if I go ahead and run this, it's going to return true because we have one age that is above or equal to 18. But if that's not the case, it's going to be false. All right, so that's all about functions for now in Kotlin. You can create them using the fun keyword and be aware that the type, just like always, is at the end of the identifier or this. All right, so that's all about functions or the basics of functions in Kotlin. We're going to take a much closer look at what we can all do with functions in Kotlin and higher order functions, lambda functions, extension functions, and so on. But for now, just notice that you have the fun keyword to declare a function. You can have var arg arguments and you must put the return type at the end of the argument list. And you can also use the shorthand syntax if a function only contains one expression by just setting it equal to that expression. But now with this knowledge, we can actually go ahead in the next lecture and create our first main function and our first reader Kotlin script that we can then run and save in a file instead of using the Kotlin REPL here. So let's move on now to the next lecture to do exactly that.